Hello, I'm Greg Rudke at Rudke Mods, and welcome to another unboxing video. Where in today we'll be unboxing this Mac right here in front of me. And uh, I was originally going to put this in the Power PC series, but unboxings, unless it's a very special Mac to me, I don't really know if I should put them in there. I'm going to be getting multiple um, boxes from this particular person, and why not just put them all into a, an unboxing? playlist like I already have and have you guys enjoy it that way. Anyway, I got this package from Nick Bustamante, a um, friend of mine who uh, lives uh, right outside of San Francisco and Nick found a, um, a Mac hoard uh, locally and uh, has been trying to sell, uh, help the person sell all these Macs and I've got at least another box or two coming from him. This is the first Mac that came in uh, today, and I want to unbox it on camera because um, I wasn't originally going to buy this um, ever um, because it's kind of a weird footnote in Apple's history where uh, they were basically just trying to dump all excess parts. Um, and so they came out with this to go alongside the uh, updated version. If you haven't figured it out just from that explanation alone, this is a G4 Yikes Tower, AKA it's a G3 blue and white with a G4 in it, in a graphite case. That's the only difference. Apple basically took the uh, surplus boards of the uh, Power Mac G3 blue and white, um, pulled the ADB header off of it, and put a G4 ZIF socket um, CPU in it and put it in a graphite case. It's just a G3 blue and white with a G4 in it. In fact, I've already got a G3 blue and white with a G4 in it. And I also have that one I swapped over a few days, a uh, few weeks ago. But um, this is the real deal. This is a real G4 yikes. And um, I don't know if this is the only thing in the box we're gonna find out because I have a lot of things coming from him, but I know this isn't the other Mac also because this would weigh about 90 pounds at least. And this is 50 pounds roughly uh, packed uh, by itself. And I had to carry it from my house to here, which is next door and it's not a very um, short walk. And this thing's heavy, <laughs> it's pretty darn heavy. But I decided we should film it. The only real reason why I bought it is because from what I understand, it was well taken care of. The uh, person uh, was a Mac, uh, an Apple reseller or something like that. And uh, they had a huge surplus of these, um, of just computers in general um, and Apple products. And um, well, this is one of them. And it's supposed to also come with uh, a box. It's supposed to be in its original box or an original box. I don't know if it's the original box. And it's also supposed to come with a few other goodies. And it might also come with some of the other stuff I bought. Um, this box probably could fit all that. So let's unbox it and um, take a look at it. Let's go. All right, guys, so I've got the unboxing knife. Let's go and uh, figure this all out. Open it up. Cut towards me. Same old spiel here. Cross. Do it this way. And everything's starting to fall this way. Let's see here. Let's see here if, if this is the original box or not. Yep. It's ATI Rage 128 graphics PCI card. So that should be a Yikes box right there. Uh, let's pull it out. 
This is basically Mike unboxing a new one, sort of. Set this on the floor for a second. Make sure there's nothing else in this box. I don't see anything else in this box. So we can put this box off to the side. Lift with the back, not with the knees. Here we go. This is pretty neat. Oh, it's got the original price tag on it. And uh, the original um, Santa Rosa, California, Xcutron computers, all the original shipping labels on it. Pretty darn neat. The original price. Let's see if I can get that. $1,599.99 for a piece of last year's technology with a G4 in it. And yeah, what can you do? But I'm not sure if this is actually a 400 like the box says. But it's a nice box. As we can see here. Let's see what we've got inside. As I almost cut my finger off, let's uh, see if I can move you guys or I don't know how I'm going to show you guys this. I guess I could tilt it towards you. Like this. Power Macintosh G4. Let's see here. We've got all the original packing stickers, the uh, protections to uh, put on the computer when they shipped it. That's pretty darn cool. They kept all that for this box, which is pretty crazy. Um, am I showing this on camera? Yeah, I am. That's pretty neat. Look at that. So you got that. What's in the Power Macintosh G4 box? I am actually quite curious. If you can see that right there. We've got just a puck mouse and a graphite keyboard. I don't think these are the originals. Ah, uh, well, that's definitely a Power Mac graphite keyboard. So that's cool. It's got the longer cable on it. There's the puck. Oh, we also have a phone cable for dial-up. And I think that's it. I've uh, dropped a few of these tags, which are must have been hanging off of things in the system. Or actually, they probably go to the keyboard and mouse originally. So I'll pick this one up here. So that's what's in that. Let's see, let's unwrap this. Still got tape on it that actually looks like the original tape. And it's still sticky too. These have definitely been used. It is quite dirty. It is like disgustingly dirty. But um, it's a nice little presentation. Thank you, Nick, for putting it back together like that. I like that. I really do. But this is going to take a lot of cleaning. <laughs> and the wire's a little messed up there, but that's a common thing for these keyboards. So that's not a big deal. As long as the keyboard still works, it's not a huge deal. You just don't move that around a whole lot. You won't have problems. Set that there. Set this in the box. 
graphite puck mouse. Also extremely filthy and disgusting and very sticky. Like, ooh, that's that's sticky. But hey, it's it's the original what it would have came with, which is cool. Um, I might clean that off a little bit before trying to use it because you but that's awesome Nick thank you then now we get to find out if this is a 400 or a 350 350s I think were a little more common because the 400s they only made for a few months but then again they only made the 350s for a few months uh, the backstory of the reason why they went from the 400 to 350 was Motorola could not have good enough production yields for Apple's demand, so they dropped all the G4s down 50 megahertz and still charged the same amount. Um, and that was just so they had good yield CPUs, and a lot of people didn't like that. And um, dropping this thing down to 350 eventually killed off the Yikes. They stopped it about midway through the Sawtooth production. It was going side by side with the Sawtooth. And um, they dropped it about midway through that production run and replaced it with the uh, G, uh, G4 350 and I think they made a 400 of um, a Sawtooth also. So yeah, got that. This is, this is just basically a G3 blue and white. So we'll pull it out here somehow. It's leaning towards me. And there we go. And it's about to fall out. Okay, I say it. Original styrofoam packaging. Pretty cool. And the system itself. In the original styrofoam bag thing, the anti-static bag, and it's got the build sticker on the box with the pass stuff. So if we pull this back here, it's got a little wear and tear. It's a little dirty, but not bad. Let's set this down real quick and get out the bag. And I won't look at the back. I'll look at the back with you guys. Set back in the box, because why not? And we have a 400, the rare model, the first model. Awesome. That's the most powerful G4 you could get in a Yikes. And this thing is full of dust. I can tell by just looking at it. But this is definitely a Yikes. It's got all the G3 ports in it, the layout of it, and the video card's in the wrong slot, which definitely tells you it's a Yikes because it's a PCI card. Uh, this should actually be here. And uh, the slot blanks are all from different systems but that doesn't matter. Um, it's still, it was still a pretty decent deal when I first bought it. And hey, it comes with the box, which is awesome. So let's set this down. I'll put the original packaging away real quick. And uh, we'll go over the ice. Yeah, it's cool they kept those. Might help to put the bag back in there too. Somehow, there we go. All right, 
So this system originally came with 64 megs of RAM. It could be upgraded to a gig. Uh, it came originally with a 10 gig 5400. I don't know why I'm reading this. The sticker on the back of the other, the, the, um, the actual system might be different. In fact, this is got kind of the serial number on it. Serial number. Serial. Is this the original box? Well, I'll be. It's the original box. This serial number right here matches the serial number right here. Same box. It's the original box. That's awesome. That's really awesome. So, let's take a look at this system right here. It uh, did not come with a zip drive. The front of it's quite icky, but hey, it's still all the original stuff. That's pretty neat. This is what I'm afraid of, opening it. Actually, even though it looks really dusty from the outside, the inside's not that bad. And, I never knew that. They changed the uh, revision on the uh, Range 128 some on the Yikes. This does look a little different. It's got a slightly upgraded heat sink and stuff. I'll show you guys that in a second. But yeah, it looks great. The only thing that's missing is a hard drive. So we can't boot it up right now. But it does look like it's got more than the original RAM. Um, I'm trying to think of a hard drive I can put into it really quick. I can probably get away with putting um, a hard drive from my blue and white G3 would probably work. So I'll see if I can pull that out or um, I'll, I'll find a hard drive that will boot with this. So yeah, uh, let's, uh, I'll show you what's on the inside of it really quick. Okay, welcome to Shaky Cam. I took you guys off the tripod so we could actually see the inside of this system here. And it looks pretty good. No drive here, but I brought over my G4 powered, Yikes G4, Yikes 400 G4 powered blue and white here. So we can see the difference between this board and that board. There really isn't any other than, we'll show you in a second. But, um, all of my top the line, all the top the line uh, towers, and I think all of my systems, except maybe one or two, are originally top the line towers. They never came with dial up modems. That I don't even think was an option. This has a dial up modem. That was the top the line G3450, which now is a G4400, but still. It didn't come with a dial-up modem. So this is different on the board. This just clips in right here. You could probably buy it aftermarket if you needed a dial-up, but I don't think from the factory on the top of the line models you could actually get the dial-up modem. So that's something, but that does of course have the port for it. You just have to get the actual modem. But uh, let's go over it real quick. There's the Rage 128 the place where you'd put the two hard drives. Um, it's got an optical drive. I don't know what it is yet. Uh, it all looks original, except it's been upgraded. This is definitely not 64 gigs of RAM. I mean, megs of RAM. It's definitely not 64 gigs. Uh, but let's see here. What do we have here? Uh, I don't know. 256. I can't tell, and I can't tell. So it's, there's at least 256 megs of RAM in here. This thing might be maxed out. We'll see when we boot it up. But I also brought this out here so we can pull the main drive out so we can boot this up and see what happens. But, um, yeah, we'll get to that. So, before we go over 
and start up. I, I want to move this card into the original slot. This was, um, these were 60, 64 bit slots that ran at, I think, 33 megahertz. This is a 66 megahertz PCI slot. It's actually designed just for the graphics card. You could put anything you want in it that would fit in the slot. It was actually meant for the graphics card so you'd get the max acceleration out of it. I don't know why they put it in the 64 slot. Go figure. So I, I, I want to move that back up there unless this slot's dead. It, it will work better in this slot. I'll be doing that and I'll be putting the hard drive in it. But before we do that, let's move the G3 over here. Open it up. And of course this thing's been upgraded a lot more, but it's got the identical same CPU in it. Um, yes, I do have a Sonnet CPU that I, I had in a, an episode, but I, um, I didn't put it back in there. It's it's made a little weird, and um, right now I just want to use the original Yikes that I had in it. So it's got the Yikes in it again. But if we look at the boards, they're identical. There there's really no difference. The only difference is right here, and you can't really see it very well underneath the modem. But you'll notice there's nothing there. Although there is a cutout for it in the uh, I.O. shield there. If you look, it's there is a cutout there. So, um, if you see it right there, yeah. This is the ADB port, which these didn't get, but you have all the pinouts for it. If you look at the back, you'll notice that the ports all line up. It's literally the same system. There was nothing different other than the ADB port. And this one, of course, doesn't have the dial-up modem. But it's the same board. No difference. They essentially literally just took the surplus and turned them from G3s to G4s. That was the only difference. Even the same power supply, same graphics cards and stuff. This one's got an upgraded 9200 in it. Um, I I have a few uh, rages from uh, the original rage and a few other ones laying in a box back there I don't feel like digging out right now or I'd show you there, there is a little slight difference I've noticed on this card but still so I'm going to pull the hard drive out of this and put it in here and move this card into the proper slot and we'll come back okay so I put the original hard drive that came with the system the blue and white uh, it's not the actual original hard drive, but the one that I, I got when I bought it uh, in here, along with a, a secondary drive. So this thing has, I think, Tiger Leopard, uh, which actually should boot on this as a modified version of Leopard. Um, and um, also OS 9, I think, are all on this uh, these two drives right here. We moved the uh, Rage uh, 128 back into the proper slot. I've got to figure out what to plug this into because I can't think of any monitors I have with VGA. Uh, <laughs> so that could be a, a, a little bit of difficulty there. But um, yeah, it's, it's all set up and ready to go. I just got to figure out how to display video out of it. And uh, we'll do that. So let's get to it. Okay, so we hooked up the original grimy keyboard and the newly cleaned uh, puck mouse to the system here. And the system, yeah, it is pretty nasty, uh, but I think it will work. The front bu button seems to be a little cockeyed, which is interesting, but it's all hooked up and ready to go. We haven't hooked up this circa 2003-2004 gateway computer monitor. Um, it's currently the only thing I could think of that has VGA that I have in the house. So yeah, it's not all error correct, but eh, oh well. And I apologize for the large scrape on the monitor. This monitor actually came in the house. Um, so I don't know what happened to it, and I, I don't have anyone to ask, so yeah. So let's turn the slide off 
and hit the power button and see what happens. The uh, front speaker sounds like it's rotten, like in my blue and white. Will it display a video? It looks like it's going to display a video. What is it going to boot into? This doesn't have a pram battery in it, so it will default to the first device it finds. I just don't know what it will default to. It's not defaulting to anything currently. That's a little concerning. All the jumpers should be right. Let's restart it and hold down the X key and see if that forces it into OS 10. I don't know if that works on these. We're going to see. Find an OS 10 drive. Come on, you can do it. It's not seeming to do anything. This could be a, a bit of an issue here. Looking at the optical drive, it is a strange color. It looks like it's factory because it's got this piece of plastic on it. But it almost looks like an old late 90s HP dark gray to it. That would be found in pavilions or something like that. I don't know if that's the original drive or not. Is it open? It does open. It's also full of grime. I never have good luck with old optical drives, so it's probably more than likely shot. But it's still not finding a boot drive, which is starting to concern me. So I'm going to play around with the IDE a little bit. Okay, so I've disconnected the OS 9 drive, and the way I have it disconnected, it won't let me close the thing currently. So we're going to see if it boots up at least. I doubt it would need a pram battery to boot up. The IDE controller might be shot. Which isn't actually a bad thing, because believe it or not, I have another board coming from Nick, which would be awesome to get, because um, I might need it. It sounds like it's trying to read the hard drive, or optical drive, I'm not sure. Okay, so it's not booting in the 10. What else could be going on here? Well, that IDE connector looks like it's not plugged in all the way. That might be the whole issue. I might have a bent pin. I'll, uh, I'll work on this a little bit. Okay, so we have reseated the IDE this time. Let's see if it boots this time. There it goes. There we go. The IDE connector was apparently loose. I don't know what this is booting into, but we will find out. It's either going to be Tiger or Leopard. I think I have Tiger first, so it should be booting into Tiger. We'll find out. Yep, that's Tiger. It was pretty quick. So yeah, you can tell this is my blue and white install. Warning me about the date being wrong. About this Mac, let's see what's on it. 
We have exactly one gig. It's fully upgraded. That's that's really awesome. Um, let's see here. What do we have on this system? Power Mac G3 PCI graphics. More proof that the Yikes is literally just a Power Mac G3. I've never seen that before. Um, that's, that's hilarious. The original, the G3 is the 1, 1. The G4 is the 1, 2. Um, <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people that bought G4s this one thinking they were buying a full-fledged G4, when they saw machine name Power Mac G3, they probably weren't happy. Because <laughs> they're like realizing that they bought last year's model with a better CPU in it. But yeah, um, the Rage 128 seems to be working fine in the original slot. Um, there's all the memory. They're all different ty uh, different uh, companies and stuff, so that's, that's a big weird mixture there. They probably were all bought at separate times. Um, it's got a DVD burner in it. So yeah, this probably is not the original optical drive. Like I said, it's probably from an HP Pavilion from the early 2000s. Um, let's see what burning says. It says Apple shipped and supported. I don't know what it would have been from, though. I'll tell you what, let's open it up and find out. Okay, so I haven't slid it out yet, but I take, took the screws out. Let's pull it out. What is it? It is, well, we already know it's a Sony, and it's a super drive. August 1st, 2003. This was from a probably G4 MDD. So it's got an MDD drive in it. It's interesting. There's a late in life upgrade probably. Who knows, they, they might have used this for a very long time. It's got signs it was used for a very long time. And that's very interesting. But yeah, I'll be uh, slapping this back together putting that drive back in my G3 and putting this off to the side for now. But I thought you guys would like to see the unboxing, see the first power up, see how it worked. And uh, I'm very happy with this result and how everything came out. And uh, thank you very much, Nick, for um, selling this to me um, and uh, sending it to me. Uh, it was a very good deal. We'll just leave it at that. Um, and I'm happy. I'm very happy. So, yeah, I think it was a pretty good outcome. It's, it's very filthy, but that's expected for a system that was used probably most of its life, which it, it's cool it got used. Um, and you can tell now that you look at it that it has been upgraded because some stuff up here looks like it might be bent some like they couldn't put it in very well and i had problems pulling it out so yeah but i had minor upgrades and they had the forethought to take the pram battery out so it didn't explode which is nice and i it's it's a nice little system it's still hilarious to think that it's just a, a blue and white um but um yeah, it's a blue and white with a G4 in it and no ADB, ADB port. It's the only difference. Uh, this is literally a Revision 2 board. It's even got the same IDE controller in it as the Revision 2 blue and white. Um, the only difference other than ADB is it doesn't have the code name of Yosemite on it, which uh, the first and second Revision um, blue and whites had because it was code name Yosemite when they designed it. So, yeah. Other than that, it's the same board, same chip, same everything. And as you saw, it even identifies as a Power Mac G3. <laughs> you know, I wonder if this board number's the same. 1086A. Let's see. Mm. 
1049A, it's not the same exactly, but it's mostly the same. So, yeah. And if you're wondering, that is the uh, blue and white that's been in most of my episodes about blue and whites. And it's also the uh, one that was in the uh, Computer Clan Vintage Apple Vault episode. Yeah, it's my old trusty blue and white that had the acorn in it. It's come a long way. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, guys, I'm happy with the result. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Thank you again, Nick. Uh, don't forget now that I am supported by SellYourMac.com. So if you have an Apple device or something you would like to sell, just go to SellYourMac.com slash RodKMods and sell something. It will help me out and it will help you out because you'll be making money. And also don't forget that I do now have a Patreon where I release these episodes a day early. Uh, if you'd like to help support me, I'd greatly appreciate it, and uh, I'll have a link to my Patreon at the end of the video and also in the description below. And that's about it. Thank you again, guys, for watching, and this has been a Rocky Mods video. A little more bonus material, guys. As I was putting the drive back in, I flipped it to the one side I didn't look at. It came from a mid-2003 Power Mac G5. That's the sticker from one, as you would see when you'd open up the case of the G5. So this is actually a Power Mac G5 Super Drive in a G4EX. A little strange, but then again, I, I always put G5 Super Drives in. This is just not the one I usually put in. Um, I don't think this supports dual layer. I'll have to go back in the video and look. Um, I don't think it does, though. Um, I don't think dual air was really a thing in 2003. It was by 2005, and that's the drive I usually use. But yeah, it's interesting. It's actually from a Power Mac G5, so I thought I'd let you guys see that. That was pretty interesting. Now stick around for my one blooper.